as we set out, wrong real fear gavants about. How can we each face this quest with pure anguish in our breast? By remembering the skills we honed, by remembering we're not alone. Because through each and every woe, faith proves to be, but not our foe. Uh, and share, you know, recipes, and oh my gosh, I can't believe I had to get up an hour early today. We're just going to wave at whoever is around us, okay? So let's stand. I'm going to say the peace of God be with you. You're going to say it also with you. And you're going to turn around wave to the people you're journeying here with today. So the peace of God be with you. Welcome your neighbors. Hi, everybody. There you go. Nice. And you can stay standing because we're going to sing our song for Lent. We are in the season of Lent. Lent means what? To lengthen, that's right. And in Advent, right before Christmas, we prepare for Christmas by lighting a candle as we look forward to Christmas. In Advent, we do what? We put out the candles, thank you, as we count down towards Good Friday. So, if um, Bettina, can I trouble you to light the Truth and Reconciliation Recommitment Candle? I'm going to put out two candles, and we're all going to sing together the Lenten song. Here we go. Thank you, Nancy, for leading us.
for their kindness has sustained many weary pilgrims. Stand to my feet on the path. Lift my eyes to the horizon. Open my heart to your enchantment. Amen. Jennifer said, 
of the season of Lent. The hero story is Jesus is proclaimed the one, very much like Nero in the Matrix, right? You get proclaimed the one, well, kind of. Is he the one? We don't know where to go. Uh, and then you get thrust into trials, right? So right after, yay, I'm the hero, you get thrust into trials. We expect that for the hero, don't we? Um, the hero overcomes those trials. Jesus gets baptized, gets thrust or told into the desert, gets tempted by Satan. Hey, hey, Jesus, you can give up this God and mission thing and telling people about love and have all the power in the world. You can have all the money in the world. You can fly. You can be incredibly like amazing. And Jesus keeps saying, No, 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 no. What I really want, what I really want, is to bring God's love to the world. The hero quest is all about that. The hero being proclaimed special, Frodo, okay, little tiny hobbit. Someone comes and says, you're the one, Frodo. The hero probably saying, I don't know, it's not me, right? The hero being thrust into the adventure, overcoming obstacles, and finally reaching their goal. This is the classic hero story that we find at the beginning of Lent and in the life of Jesus. And it is no wonder because scripture, which we think is meant to tell us about God, is meant to tell us about us. It's meant to tell us about who we are. In fairy tales and in every hero quest, the idea is that someone who thinks themselves unworthy or possibly worthy or hopes to be worthy, is given a task, a mission. And the point of the mission or task is that they are going to receive or reach or acquire the thing most desired, the thing most necessary, the thing most needed, the thing most loved. They understand that there are going to be obstacles put in their way. This is not going to be easy. There are going to be trials. But they also understand that they were chosen for this mission. And whether you're a tiny little hobbit like Frodo, or a fighter who's told he's washed up and his moment is past, like Rocky, inside each of them they have this conviction, I was meant to do this. Someone has chosen me and I was meant to do this. It's the same as Jesus. Someone has chosen me. Jesus has this amazing moment of being baptized and God saying, you are my beloved son. And then enters the desert prepared for those obstacles which are going to allow Jesus to get the tools he needs to get the thing most needed, the thing most necessary, the thing most loved. This mission of telling people that you are not separate from God. If any of you think I'm now going to say that this is about our lives, it's because it absolutely is, isn't it? I used to be convinced that the most important thing for us was how we pictured our life, the framework we used for it. Um, whether or not we thought that we were just, you know, victims and all this bad stuff happened, or we thought that we were on a journey and we were meant to learn things. That is so important. But there is something even more important. That is knowing that this journey was chosen for us and us for it. And it's knowing for each of us what is that thing that's most desired. What is that thing that's most necessary? What is it that we are learning these lessons and overcoming these triumphs, these trials for? The hero has to know what it is that they want. And the hero has to remember at every moment, I was chosen for this, and this was chosen for me. And boy, oh boy, can that be challenging when we start to live it. I remember someone saying to me, uh, why didn't Indiana Jones just stop and find a way to stop the boulder? Now, this is a friend of mine who, who is constantly saying that whatever comes into her life shouldn't have happened. Okay? Should not have happened. This shouldn't have happened. My mother should not have got cancer when I was only in my 40s. Okay? I should not have lost that job I really liked. I should not have ended up with this guy who makes my life miserable. <laughs> yeah, okay, you're hearing it, aren't you? 
But she actually said to me years ago after that movie, well, he shouldn't have been chased by a boulder. <laughs> and as you laugh at that, and you have every right and reason to laugh at that, I thought, there is, there is exactly what I don't want to do in my life. I don't want to constantly be saying, this shouldn't be the way the movie goes. I don't want to be the one standing up in front of the movie screen saying, no, change this. No boulder. Okay? No Nazis. She couldn't change that movie, but she also couldn't see how she was fighting in the same fruitless ways to change the events that came into her life. The movie unfolds in a way that the hero has the right tests. The movie unfolds like our lives, and it brings us, God help us, things which are helping us reach what we most desire. What do we most desire? At this point, you may find slightly different words for it, but it's got to be the same thing. I desire a peace which is fundamental in whatever comes to me. I desire the feeling of being channel, a channel of divine grace and wisdom instead of this little package of personality traits and grievances and annoyances. This little, I want to be more than the voice in my head that's always making a case against somebody because if they weren't doing what they're doing, I would be at peace, okay? If this wasn't happening, I would be at peace. The boulder should not be occurring in my life. I don't want to be that. I want to be the hero. I want to be Rocky, who listens to those voices that say you're washed up and it's over for you. I want to be Harry, that listens to that voice who says you're just an orphan and you're nine, 11 years old, and in spite of those voices says I was chosen for this journey. And the thing I most desire is to use these trials well to learn from them, to learn to live more skillfully from them, to learn to live in fundamental peace and communion with whatever I know my higher power, my inner wisdom to be. That's the goal. That's the goal. And now life's going to bring me whatever I need to help me get to that goal. I have not always thought that, as I would say, and I don't always think that every day. But I am convinced that that would make the difference between us living that hero's journey, which we recognize as a fundamental story that human beings can frame their life as, or a story where we're simply the victim of whatever horrendous thing life wants to bring us next. Last night I was at a family gathering. <laughs> God bless him. Um, um, Deepak Chopra says, if you believe that you have achieved enlightenment, okay, if you believe that you are fully channeling your inner wisdom, if you believe that you're fully connected with that peace that you so desire, that is the thing most needed, you've reached that goal, spend a few hours with your family. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's all gone, right? It's all gone. <laughs> Suddenly we're the victim. If these people didn't behave this way, I would be at peace. The hero knows that whatever was brought to her is for her good. It's training her, right? The, the meaning of sin actually is to live unskillfully, right? We have this idea that, that sin is the boulder. <laughs> I mean, sin is going to stop us in our tracks. Sin is, is an end point to your journey. Sin means you never deserve peace. You don't deserve love. We have this idea, because we've been taught, that sin means that we are punished forever because we're sort of bad people. That's not what sin actually means. Sin means to live unskillfully. So I, this time I didn't choose peace. This time I forgot that I'm a hero in these trials they sent to help me get better. This time I simply took things personally. Okay? So I'm at this family gathering last night. <laughs> This is such a tiny story. I, I can't believe this is what was brought forward to me that I wanted to share. And it was uh, my wife's family, okay? Lovely people. Um, it was a celebration of her brother's 50th birthday. It's the first time I've been in a room with like 25 people in two years, so that was something. <laughs> you know, like 25 people, I know. It's like, I, mean, I could have been in like the, a Coliseum or something with 40,000 people. What are all these people doing? <laughs> anyway. So at some point in the evening, 
they, they all very excitedly, Liz and my wife, and uh, her, her dad and mom and her brother and her brother's newest girlfriend, and oh, that was catty, uh, and uh, his sons and whatever, the, my nephews, they all get together for the family picture, right? And I'm in the back talking to someone, and I realize that they are taking the family picture, all smiling and happy, and no one has realized that I'm not in it. And she and I have been together for 22 years. I have outlived his, her brother's ex-wife and many girlfriends. Okay, I'm still standing, right? Okay, you know. And I had a hero or victim moment in that moment. Because the victim side of me, you know, the boulder coming at me, the boulder coming at me is, they don't regard you. They don't respect you. They don't really think that your relationship with their daughter matters. They don't really think you're part of the family. You guys can make up the story, right? Okay, because we make up the story in any different way. Whatever it is, is grievance, 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 right? Okay, right, right. And then in that instant, because I knew what I wanted to talk about today, I said, how do I want to make this part of my journey? What is the thing most desired? What is the thing most needed? What is the thing most loved? How do I keep my eye on that prize and live into my hero journey? And I thought, I let it go. Let it go. Oh my gosh. Really? I want to make all the people around me unhappy by saying, hello, you left me out of the picture, right? Do I want to do that? Because that's what I'm going to get. In this moment of my hero journey, the only question is, do I want to be happy or not? That seems like a pretty easy question, right? And that's so often the question. Do I want to cause a stink? Do I want to cause drama? Do I want to get in the thick of it? Do I want to tell someone else they're wrong? Do I want to say that you are my problem? Do I want to take it personally? Or do I want to just change the story to a hero story and say, this is a riot that they've all forgotten again, because it's happened before. Like, this is just so funny, and I know Liz loves me, and I know her family values me, and this is just kind of funny. And you know what happened? I actually chose that second one. I actually chose a hero response. Instead of saying, the boulder shouldn't be here, and somebody needs to fix this, I actually went, here's the boulder. I'm going to step aside. I'm going to make it to the sea plane. I'm going to get off the island. And what happened in that moment? I actually felt peace. I actually felt <coughs> kind of joy. I actually felt like I had accessed some kind of inner guidance system which allowed me to live into my hero journey, to keep my eye on the prize that what I want is inner peace, what I want is inner wisdom, and what I want is to offer happiness and be happy. That's what I want. Liz came over and said, I can't believe we left you out of the picture again. And I said, you know what? This is like a family tradition now. It's funny. And everyone felt better. And then we all reconvened and did another picture. What happened? We all realized peace. We all found joy. We all got the prize. The thing about the hero journey is that yes, life will send you the lessons that you need, and yes, it will send you to you over and over and over until you figure it out. My same friend would go through, I remember not sitting him off, Jordan, oh, and Kyle, before she finally realized that the problem with the guy she was picking was the guy she was picking. Life will continue to send you the lessons you need until you figure out how to bring this moment to peace, how to bring this issue into a realization of inner wisdom, how to bring this lesson into your journey, which is meant to give you the prize of living fully in communion with your God. You will have to learn that lesson before you go on to the next lesson, and you will have to keep learning lessons. There is a reason why Star Wars is many, many, many episodes well, part of it is money, okay, for sure. But the idea is that the hero's journey doesn't actually end. But how the hero learns to move through that journey grows and strengthens and develops. And that's one of the things that makes the Harry Potter series so compelling for people, that the young boy that we see in the first episode has grown into the courageous, young man who knows what he's got into him, who knows that he can pull up his wand of goodness and use it for effect. For gosh sakes, he's at a school. And so are we. 
The hero's journey is what every single one of us is called to, so no wonder we resonate with those movies so much. But what we need to do is remember that those obstacles can be seen as something that simply make us sit down and go no further. It's over. We're back. We failed. Remember those thoughts because you're going to find them along the way. Those are the boulders that come at us. But the hero's journey is what keeps us coming back to movies like Star Wars, where Luke puts down the technology and says, I'm going to live from my inner wisdom because we know it's there. We can feel it. Sometimes we can touch it. Every now and then, in such a small way like I did last night, we are grateful that we managed to live into it. And when we do that, when we keep our minds on that hero's journey and that prize of inner peace or sharing love, we experience exactly what Jesus' hero journey ends with. We may feel a little bloodied, we may feel a little tired, we may feel as if the time and being tried in the desert was a little long. But eventually we see that we have walked into a new place in life where we're living more skillfully, where we're sharing more wisely, and where we're living a little more like the hero God has placed within us all. Thanks be to God.
happened on the way up here to this podium. And let me explain. Um, I didn't write most of this. Um, and it wasn't until Anne spoke that I realized why I did it, which is kind of a screwy way of timing. But because uh, I realized afterwards, or actually when I was sitting there, that this is about the choice between being a victim and being a hero. Let us pray. We pray for understanding that with the help of God, we can, fa we can face the calamities of life and transform them into assets, sources of growth and comfort to ourselves and those about us. Make us channels of God's peace, that where there is hatred, we may bring love, that where there is wrong, we may bring a spirit of forgiveness, that where there is discord, we may bring harmony, that where, those, where there is error, we may bring truth, that where there is doubt, we may bring faith, that where there is despair, we may bring hope. That where there are shadows, we may bring light. That where there is sadness, we may bring joy. Lord, grant that we may seek rest to comfort rather than be comforted. To understand, then to be understood. To love, then to be loved. For it is by self-forgetting that one finds. It is by forgiving that one is forgiven. It is by dying that we awaken to life. Amen. Here are some of the prayers of the people. We pray for the people of the Ukraine and we give thanks for the countries and the people around the world who are sharing their care and their support. We pray for people who have lost loved ones in the recent executions in Saudi Arabia. We give thanks for signs of George's recovery and thanks that he's found a good healer. We ask a blessing on, on behalf of Bettina, help her stay centered and hear your words and guidance in a challenging time. We pray for Christian and Kenzie. May they feel your presence and your love. We pray for Charlie after his recent operation. Help him heal. May he know his family says prayers for him. We pray for Kamal to find his way so he may use all his gifts on this journey. We pray for our homes community and may they find friendship and comfort in places like our main program. We pray for Sue for healing. We're grateful for the love that surrounds her. And finally, we pray, please help us create in us a clear channel for your wisdom and love so that all our light will touch all we see. Amen. About each of us heroes' journeys is simply that they're all going to look different. We can't compare ourselves with someone else's path. What's the same about them is that we already have placed inside us everything we need to do this well. And we already have a guide to help us in the moments when we are ready to be rocky. So please stand for the blessing and benediction. So, on your journey, heroes, everyone, may the love of God and the grace and guidance of our guide, Jesus Christ, and the fellowship and constant communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide upon you, everyone, now and throughout your journey.